We're about a month away before producers are going to start seeding alfalfa. So Alex, what do producers need to think about before they start doing that? I would say that if they didn't do yet, go ahead and select an appropriate field to seed your alfalfa. Alfalfa seed is very expensive. There are lots of money involved on herbicide, on prepping the soil, on fertilization. So I believe that for invest all those resources and energy, better that you select the right field so you can be successful. You know, when it comes to the right field, do producers need to think about, uh, you know, the amount of rain that it's going to get? Like, you have some alfalfa planted out here and we just got a lot of rain right. um, and you see a lot of standing water. Does that play a role? Yes. In alfalfa, that really plays a big role. That's why our alfalfa starts over there, because we don't have any water logging, ponding over there as we have here. That is the worst situation for an alfalfa field. First thing that you need to think on an alfalfa field is a deep soil, well drained, that is leveled, and we have slopes, ideally talking, less than 2%. Because those water pondings that you, you are seeing here, the, al the alfalfa roots stay in that condition, they will really die asphyxiated. Also, can have alfalfa scalding and diseases such as root rot. That's a very concern here in Oklahoma when you talk about alfalfa. If you had alfalfa in a field, or you have alfalfa in a field right now, and your stand is thin, and you are planning on terminating that alfalfa field, and right after see the new alfalfa, I would say that might be a no-go. Uh, the old alfalfa stand produced some substances that is toxic to the new alfalfa seedlings. That's what you call autotoxicity. So when you talk about uh, you are selecting a field and pay attention and go back in time and think in a year and a half back in time, I had alfalfa any time in that field. If the answer is yes, I highly recommend that they go and read the fact sheet alfalfa autotoxicity. In that fact sheet, there is a nice table that can help the producer uh, really figure out how long he needs to wait uh, exactly to put a new alfalfa stand there. So with alfalfa, we're always concerned, or not concerned, but it, fertilization plays a really important role. Right. Um, what, walk us through some things that producers really need to keep that in mind when it comes to fertilization. Even before we talk about fertilization, I would make another note here about uh, herbicides. I would say like if in the past three years to be very conservative, if producers go back in time, take a look what they had applied based on the crops or pastures that they had there. And if they had applied any kind of picloran, picloram that is sold like Grayson, P plus D or Tordon 22K, or if they had wheat there and that they had applied sulfonylureas, uh, such as sold as Ally or Finesse, uh, the residue of those herbicides can really affect the seedling of the alfalfa. So in this case, it's highly recommended that the producer go back to the label and look to the rotational crop restrictions to see if there was time enough that we don't have more of those residues in the soil. Uh, in some situations, even they need to do some bioassays to make sure that they don't have those herbicide residues. So I would say now that we had checked everything that I had told about herbicides, autotoxicity, and have a well-drained soil, now we can think about going there, taking some, some soil samples, if it was not done yet, run some soil analysis, because alfalfa, it is very important that we have the right pH. Uh, I would say that before planting alfalfa, make sure that your soil has a pH about 6.5. Even if the soil analysis return with a pH very low, like 5, 5.5, you need to place the right amount of lime in there, I would say even postpone the seeding for next year. Because it really takes time for lime reacting the soil. It's not that you just place the lime there, that we are going to have that, that lime reacting and the pH ready for the alfalfa in a matter of one month. And then, of course, uh, 
take the advantage that the last time that you can disc and incorporate other uh, uh, some fertilizers and put the right amount of PK and other micro and macro nutrients. So you actually have a lunchtime series that that you and your team are doing in regards to alfalfa. Right. Yeah, that's true. So we are coming up with a second series for the ranchers lunchtime series that's going to be exactly on how manage alfalfa for beef cattle. All right, thanks Alex. Dr. Alex Arcatelli, Forage Systems Specialist here at Oklahoma State University. And if you would like a link to that lunchtime series, go to our website, sunup.okstate.edu.